So today we're talking about where do you, you know, what do you, what, how, how do you find a good bike shop? You ask around, you don't, you don't know yourself, you can't walk in and, and know what a good bike shop is. So I'm going to try and help you out as far as, you know, finding that good bike shop. Now there's a lot of bike shops out there that have good mechanics, but the mechanics ride very little. It's very rare to find a bike shop that has a mechanic that has ridden a lot, especially at high levels, or at least at high mileages. You either have to be high intensity, high mileage, or both. So that's either racing or touring centuries or something that really places a lot of stress on the bike so that it needs, so that they realize what what happens in long-term repair. Also, the weight of the rider is so important. Between the weight and strength and skill of a rider, they can tear up a bike really quickly, where a 120-pound rider could be a, a very highly skilled and very strong, but simply because they weigh 100 pounds or 90 pounds less than I do, they, uh, they won't tear up a bike nearly as fast as I do. So they have a combination of a lot of things. They need to be, they need to have the mechanical expertise that comes from years of experience of working on a bike, whether they did it professionally or on their, or on their own, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, and they need to spend a lot of time on a bike to realize what someone coming in is complaining about or wants to buy. Otherwise, if they don't, if all they do is mechanic work and they don't do any riding, they won't realize all the different needs. And when they do riding, and they're selling different kinds of bikes, such as road, hybrids, comfort bikes, and uh, recumbents or mountain bikes, if they don't do all styles of riding, again, they won't know what the customer really needs. So there is the people that you're looking at. Uh, so your first question would be, you know, what kind of rider are, you know, when you're talking to the salesperson, what kind of rider are they? Then you ask, you know, how many years experience they have, you know, repairing bikes. That would be number one. Experience in riding, experience as a mechanic. Then number two, uh, a good bike shop is going to sell you the bike that you need. Uh, just because you want to ride on the road doesn't mean you need a, a road racing bike or a, what's called. There's a lot of confusion in what bikes are labeled. Uh, people are calling road bikes even though one's designed for racing and one's not. They're calling, they're grouping them all into one. So I, I call <clears throat> I call bikes either a road racing bike, which is designed for racing, a road bike, which is designed for recreational use, or a road sport bike, which is designed for recreational use with a very uh, relaxed geometry on it that steers easier for the beginner. And if you're not if you don't want the drop bars of the road bike, then you're in. Then you go to the flat bars of the hybrid, and those are a, a slightly different fit too. So you're looking for a bike shop that sells the different kinds of bikes, so you can at least test ride and see what you want. Do you want a road bike, like with the drop bars? Do you want a hybrid with the flat bars? You want a comfort bike with fatter tires and suspension on the front and maybe a suspension seat. Do uh, you want a mountain bike because you're going to ride off-road? Or do you just want a mountain bike because you're riding on-road? A lot of people buy the mountain bikes for on-road. It's kind of a... Uh, well, with the before the uh, adventure bikes and fatter tire bikes for the road came out, that was your only choice. You either rode skinny tire road bikes or hybrids, or you rode a mountain bike with, with the fatter tires. But if you want to ride fatter tires with the upright position, 
on the road, you can either go the hybrid, which will be just as, just about as uh, same as a road bike, with, except with flat bars, or you can go to a comfort bike or to a mountain bike. You can ride the mountain bikes on the road, but a good bike shop is going to listen to the kind of riding you're going to do and either correct you because you're talking about riding that's not really possible or they're going to sell you a bike that matches that kind of riding. So if you're interested in road riding and you are fit, already fit, you already don't have any extra body fat, <clears throat> the road bike is a consideration. You have a little extra body fat and you still want the, the, the skinny tires and a faster bike, then a hybrid is your next choice. And if you're extremely overweight, then you're going to want the comfort bike or a hybrid or a, sorry, comfort bike or a mountain bike. Word of mouth, I don't know if that's really worth all that much. Because there's so many people out there that really don't know what they're talking about. And some, some of those people, unfortunately, are bike shop owners, too, simply because they don't ride. So they don't really know what the demands of a true rider is. All they know is what they hear, and that becomes opinion. So if you're riding on the road, you have a lot of choices. You can, you can certainly ride off-road bikes on the road. You can ride on-road bikes that are road bikes, hybrids, comfort bikes, mountain bikes. You can ride anything on the road, actually. You can ride anything off-road too, but I wouldn't suggest putting a, a, a road bike off-road, even though cyclocross bikes are very close to being road bikes ridden off-road. But with mountain bikes available today and suspension and fatter tires for the comfort, it doesn't, uh, unless you're a cyclocross racer, don't buy a cyclocross bike. Get a regular mountain bike. So your intent of riding is one of your decisions. Your body weight is another that's going to decide what kind of bike you really need and your physical condition is uh, how much body fat you have at the time of you buy your first bike will also determine uh, the kind of bike you have you're going to need and your your and the bike shop should reflect this if you're walking in with a with an extra 20 30 pounds of belly on you and they're trying to sell you a road bike it's not a good bike shop it's not a good bike shop there's no way you can configure a road bike with all this extra belly fat to properly fit you. There's not going to be any room to bring your legs up at the top of the stroke. You see these guys on these bikes, and what they do is they bring their knees out to clear their, to clear their belly in this aerodynamic position. So if a bike shop said, you walk in there, you said you want a good bike for the road, and they immediately put you on a road bike, they don't know what they're doing find another shop. Now a lot of times you don't have a choice. There may be only one shop in town. So it's up to you whether you want to use that shop and the convenience of bringing it back for maintenance and uh, just have to argue, argue your way into the correct bike that you want. Now uh, it's, whether these shops are ever selling people or not, I don't know. I, I've been riding for so long that I can identify the posers and the, and the BS that comes from bike shop uh, salespeople right off the bat. It doesn't it does take me more than a few sentences to know whether they know what they're talking, talking about or not. Now a beginner doesn't have that advantage. So I can imagine the difficulty there is in choosing a bike shop. Now also the bike shop should allow you to test ride the bike, but most test rides are going to end up in a parking lot and even with all my experience there's no way I can tell everything about a bike in a parking lot test ride. I need by the time I reach 50 to 70 miles of long continual riding in the flats in the mountains at about the 70 mile range I'll know if the bike is correct or not. I'll know if the bike's gonna work or not or I'll know what I have to change to make it fit better or to, uh, 
to well, just to make it work. As, as far as performance goes, I'll, I'll certainly know after 50 to 70 miles whether it's the kind of performing bike I want. And performing means, you know, what parts are too flexible. You know, is a frame, is a frame. You know, performance is intent. So if my intent was to ride a comfortable long century, then a stiff racing bike probably isn't what I want. So the we're in the the uh, so we're into the question of you know what kind of bike you need, what kind of bike. You, for the kind of intent of riding you want to do, and how much overlap are you going to do? You know, if you want to ride road and off-road, then you could buy a, you could buy a mountain bike, two sets of wheels, one with road tires on it, one with mountain, uh, and one set of wheels with mountain bike tires, and use the mountain bike for both. Um, doing any kind of long distance on a mountain bike on the road would be very difficult. You'd have to be <clears throat> you'd have to be very strong to get to get past that. Uh, the hand positions are are just not there's just not enough hand positions on a mountain bike usually to to do any kind of 50 to you know 70 80 miles to spend 3 4 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours on a mountain bike on the road is pretty difficult. It's not impossible, it's just very difficult. Might come back with numb hands. Uh, also, if you're buying a more inexpensive bike, it's very, you'd have to spend a lot of money to get a lightweight mountain bike that would be as light as a road bike for far less money. So here we are with, uh, with a dealer that hopefully he is a, an experienced rider, an experienced mechanic. When you come in, you tell him what kind of riding you're going to do. He's not going to set you up on the wrong bike just to sell you an expensive bike. And uh, next is the, the bike you do finally arrive on. This is the model I want. Then they should be they should know how to know if the bike's going to fit you correctly. Uh, it, do, it doesn't really take a fit kit, but uh, it's nice if they have some kind of measuring system to. Uh, to let you know, you know, first of all, if you're going to have to change stem lengths or something like that. Uh, so the best way to find a bike shop, if you're not going to believe what you ask other people, is to uh, is to send out those test questions, I guess. Uh, Another thing, of course, if you're buying a, a new bike, you want uh, you want a very good guarantee with it. And if you're new to cycling, if you're new to cycling, you're going to want that mechanic there to to check this bike out every so every so often to make sure it's uh, adjusted correctly and safe to ride. As you grow in experience, you'll notice noises in the bike, and uh, at first. Anytime you notice know, any noise on the bike other than the sound of the tires on the road or the whisper of the chain running, any other noise other than that means there's something wrong. Any squeaks, any rattles, any clicks, any clunks. Um, when you're shifting, the, the, the gears aren't working correctly. Uh, any noise, though, that you hear on a bike means there's something wrong and you want to get that fixed right away so that you're not stranded. So as you get more experienced, you'll hear these noises and you'll know what they are. Uh, I, can, I can identify most noises on a bike and eventually know what the problem is and get it fixed. And a lot of people confuse opinion with, uh, with experience. To form an opinion, it's because you don't people that form an opinion are people that aren't experienced. They have to go to the experienced people, listen to what they have to say, gather as much information from the experienced people, and then form their own opinion as to what they need. Now, an experienced person, a very experienced person, doesn't use opinion, they use the experience of, in such as cycling, they would use the experience of decades and decades of time on the road with 
of hundreds of thousands of miles. Usually by the time you've been through hundreds of thousands of miles, you've been through just about all the trouble that you're going to find. You're going to break spokes, you're going to break chains, you're going to break frames, you're going to break just about everything on the bike. You're going to break cables, things are going to come apart, you're going to do on-road repairs, you're going to find out what kind of tools you need to take basically with you every time you go out. After a couple of hundred thousand miles, pretty much everything that's going to break or happen to you will happen to you. And that's the kind of experience you need with the bike, the bike store. Now the, the, bike, the bike store, if it's big, of course they can't afford, they probably can't afford to hire expert everybody's. So if the salesman's going off track, you probably need to ask for a different salesman. So like I said, the biggest warning signs is is being oversold on these road racing bikes. Recreational cyclists don't need road racing bikes. If you want one and you want to pay for it, that's fine, that's your money, do what you want. But they don't do a lot. A road racing bike, all the technology, all the fine tuning, everything they do is designed for race conditions. Most of the frame and all of this uh, uh, stiffness and all this built up they do on the carbon frames are designed for that final sprint. They're trying to get as much power through the bike without the bike absorbing the power. Uh, the next part is they're designing the bike for handling, they're designing the bike for comfort as much as they can being a short wheel-based racing bike. But all that R&D that you're paying for, all that lightweight all that stuff only really matters in racing conditions. In sprinting, accelerating hard, being in a peloton, and the yo-yo of continually being in a draft of the bike slowing down, speeding up. All these things demand racing bikes. But when you get out on the road and you're at a constant speed, you're at a constant climb, and you're just cruising, all that technology that you're paying for really isn't doing you much good at all. So if you walk in there and you say you want a good bike for road riding and you're and you got 20 pounds extra on your belly and the first thing they walk over here's a here's a good road bike for four thousand dollars it's time to ask for a new salesman or if that's uh, no other salesman out there you, you try to find a new shop for those of you that uh, don't have a choice you live in a small town there's only one shop You'll have to deal with whatever, whatever's happening there and hope for the best. Eventually you'll get more experienced as you ride and uh, you won't need the sales help or the bike shops help very much anymore. If you don't want to do your own mechanics, that's fine. You'll still be experienced. You can take it in and say, I need my wheels rebuilt. I need a new bottom bracket. I need a new crank set. I need a new chain and cassette. You'll need, you can tell them what you need by then and it gets a lot easier. But uh, yeah, it's a very quick question, what makes up a good bike shop? So the good bike shop is one experienced mechanic who is a very experienced cyclist at a very high level. They don't try to oversell you. They listen to the kind of bike that you, uh, the bike riding intent that you tried, that you're going to do with the bike, the kind of riding you're going to do with the bike and you map, they match that bike to your intent, to your weight, your body weight, to your skill, and to your uh, and to your uh, physical body weight. As far as you know, are you even able to get in an aerodynamic position yet? So that's uh, that's finding a bike shop in today's climate, and I wish you luck. Thanks.